Hey everyone, just a quick little video here to show you how you can configure your development environment in Visual Studio Code uh, to use AWS services and do the remote remote development against a, a Node.js uh, server. Um, so prerequisite here is the assumption is you already have Visual Studio Code already installed and you already have uh, an AWS account already set up and you're logged into the console as I am here. So a pretty simple process. Uh, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go over, <clears throat> excuse me, we're gonna go over and we're gonna select EC2 from the, the toolbar and come into the EC2 dashboard. And uh, I'm gonna start off with creating a brand new instance uh, here. So if I don't, assuming you don't have one, so let's go ahead and call this my node dev box and scroll down. I'm going to select the Amazon Linux environment and I'm also going to leave all this the same. Uh, I'm also going to scroll down here. I'm going to make it a little bigger. So I'm going to pick a slightly bigger instance type here. I'm going to pick uh, T2 small, which is sufficient for demonstration purposes. Obviously, you can pick a larger one if you need to. Uh, then you're going to scroll down a little further. You are going to need to select a key pair. And we'll need this uh, to be able to SSH in to, to the, our Linux box. Uh, so that's essentially what Visual Studio Code is going to use. It's going to use uh, SSH uh, to be able to uh, do that remote development. So first thing we'll do here, if you have a key pair, you can select one. Uh, so I'm going to create a new one since I don't have one. I'm going to call mine my dev key. Okay. I'm going to also, sorry about the spelling there. My dev key, I'm going to leave this the same here. I'm going to do it as a pem file and I'm going to create this key pair. Now it's important once you create the key pair, just make sure you know where it is. You should, uh, it'll be saved or downloaded uh, to some folder. Uh, so make sure you know where you, where you download that to. Normally it's most times gonna be the download folder. Uh, we'll come back and use that in a second. All right, so now we're gonna make sure that that key pair is selected and we'll scroll down a little further. We are going to create a brand new security group and we're going to allow access to SSH traffic as, long as, as well as HTTPS and HTTP traffic uh, for doing any kind of web development with Node, uh, you'd want to possibly use that traffic or those protocols. Uh, and we're obviously going to need SSH, and we're set up to be anywhere, uh, so that anywhere can use this. Obviously, if you were worried about security, you'd lock this down to uh, a specific IP. Uh, but for our purposes, we're going to leave it open. I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to make this a little bigger, give myself a little more space there for storage. All right, uh, I'm going to come down to advanced details and I'm going to scroll all the way to the bottom. Uh, we don't really need to set any of these, others, these other settings up here, but one thing we do want to do is we want to set it up so that when this server first comes up, it automatically has access to uh, Node. So we're going to create a little script and this will start up. This, will, this script will run the first time that the instance when it's first created. Okay, so this is kind of a one-time shot here. And I'm just going to do a little bash script. And I'm going to come down here and I'm just going to do a yum install node.js dash y. And that'll go ahead and when the server starts up, it'll automatically go ahead and run that script. And that's about it for right now. We don't have to set anything else. We'll go ahead and click launch instance. Now that'll take a minute or two to launch. And while that's doing that, uh, we can go on and select a couple other things that we'll have to do. Uh, so let's go back into our EC2 instances dashboard. And you'll see I have some other ones here that I've, I've been working on this before, but here's the one that's spinning up. So we're gonna click on the one we just started and we're gonna scroll, come over here, click on security. And we're going to select the security group there. And here's our security rules that we set before. So here's our traffic for uh, SSH as well as 80 and 443. We're gonna, in, we're gonna go ahead and, and add to this a little bit. We're gonna add one more rule here and we're going to make it a custom TCP traffic rule and we're gonna say 8080. Uh, and the reason I'm doing that is we want to possibly be able to have uh, internet traffic or HTTP traffic be able to uh, see our web server our node server from the internet. So we have to allow that traffic. And 8080 is a, is a kind of a common protocol uh, or a common port that we will use uh, for doing kind of node server development. Um, if you were doing React, 
you would also probably want to expose 3000 because that happens to be, be the default port that React applications use. And I'm gonna select these all up so these can be accessed from anywhere. I'm gonna go ahead and I'll just leave 3000 there as well as the 8080. That way you have both if you ever wanted to try that. All right, now that's gonna go ahead and get that server started up for us. And we have now the security so we can access that. Uh, so next thing would be, uh, we wanna come down here to Elastic IPs. And uh, the reason we wanna do this one is what happens with in AWS is that when you shut down your service, uh, it will automatically uh, give you a new IP address every single time. So what I mean by that is if I come in here to my instances and if I were to stop this instance, uh, it's running right now, but if I were to come down here and stop that and restart it, I would get another different IP address than this one, okay? And same with the, uh, the public IP, they would both change. So we don't want that, we want it to, sp to stay static. And the way you do that within AWS is you create an elastic IP. Uh, now there is a small charge for this. Uh, it ends up being a couple dollars a month, I think three or four dollars a month if you don't use it. But as long as the instance is running and it's associated to an instance, uh, there's no charge. So we're gonna go ahead and allocate one and we're gonna go ahead and pick, uh, pick this, leave all this the same, don't have to change any of that. We're then going to then come back into this one and we are going to associate it with our instance. So we'll select associate and then we'll pick our dev box instance and click associate and come back in here again, click on refresh here and let's see, we should get a new IP address. And so there's our IP address. So this should stay static. So we won't have to change every time. We can just confirm that. I'm just gonna come back down here and make sure I got that right. So 312.178.135 is the IP address. So if I come back in here, um, we'll see that that's 312. Yeah, there it is, 130. So that's our address. So that'll be the IP address we need to remote into our dev box, okay? All right, a couple things I'll also point out if you want to, it's kind of always convenient. You can connect directly to this as well. So if you come up here to click connect and using the EC2 instance connect, uh, since I opened up SSH, uh, I can then log in directly to the box using the default user, which with, with Linux EC2 instances on AWS, it's, uh, it's actually uh, the EC2 user is the user account that, that it sets up for us by default. So that would be our default user anytime we're SSHing into uh, the box. And even when we're doing our development, that'll be the default user. You could obviously create a new ones if you wanted to, uh, but that's what we use. <clears throat> uh, so here you can kind of see that it's going to actually show us a SSH or a Linux, kind of a terminal session, if you will, directly into our box. So we were actually connected in there we see our private IP, which is what I would expect. But just to confirm that node is running, I'll just type node dash dash version. And we'll see that I, I have version 18.12.1 installed. So if you get this far, then your, your Amazon Linux uh, instance is ready to go. So it actually has node already installed and we're now ready to then begin the next step which is to go ahead and configure it so we can connect through Visual Studio. All right, so let's go ahead and set up the rest of the configuration. Uh, so we downloaded that, that's, that key from AWS. And uh, remember I called my key, mydevkey.pem. Um, I actually created my key and moved it into a special folder. So just make sure you know where that is. Uh, I recommend moving this to a kind of a, a good location so you remember where your keys are. Um, and uh, for me, I'm storing, excuse me, excuse me, I'm storing mine in this directory here. Uh, so just record that you'll need to know this whole path once we get going further. So just, just, just make a note of wherever you're storing your key at. One important note here is I'm actually using a MacBook, MacBook here. Uh, so in Mac and Linux, uh, you have to set the permissions of this file correctly. If you don't, you will get an error. Uh, so to demonstrate what I'm talking about, if I were to, um, try to SSH, and again, if you're Windows, you would have to use this, do this through PuTTY, but if, you're, if you were to try to SSH into uh, that box directly, 
um, using that PEM file, uh, you would get an error message. And the first time you try to do it, obviously you're gonna have to select yes here because I've never connected to this box before. Uh, you'll see I get this message, unprotected private key file. That simply means the permissions are too open. Uh, so if you do an ls-l and you can kind of see the permissions here are such that it's read write for me, and, but it's also write, read, readable by everyone else. So that's too broad and this is just a warning. And if you don't fix this, then you won't be able to use the key uh, to SSH uh, within Visual Studio Code. So let's go ahead and fix that now. I'm gonna go ahead and do a change mod. Uh, and I'm going to do 400, which will re which will reduce the permissions. And I'm going to go ahead and pick that that key file. All right. Now, if I run that connection again and then try to SSH in, you'll see that I actually got in. So this is no different than what I showed you through the console, but you can obviously use SSH to go whatever tool you're using uh, to to directly go into this uh, Amazon Linux um, EC2 instance if you want. But anyway, so I want to set that up for us. Now, what we have to do next is we need to go into Visual Studio Code, do a couple things. There's going to be an extension that you'll need to install. And what it is, it's going to be remote development. So if I type in remote development, just make sure you have this extension selected and enabled. Okay. If you have it enabled, you're going to see at the bottom left here, a little box here with a little green little green box when you click it it's going to give you some options uh, to connect remotely and what we want to do is we want to select the connect to host option now when you first do this you're going to have to configure your specific server uh, so i already have one configured uh, that i'll use as a demonstration but for right now let's go ahead and show you how to configure that directly so you may not see anything here but any server that you have configured will show up in this list once you've defined it. But the way we define that is through this configure SSH options. And you're going to select the one you're gonna use. In my case, I'm using this one, uh, the first one at the top here as my configuration file. And here is what you need to have in here. So you need to uh, have in this host record entry and you can give this any name. That's just simply the name that's gonna be displayed on the top then you have to give it the public IP, all right? So this will be the public IP of the server. So in my case, it's going to be 312.178.135. So I'm gonna copy that and I'm gonna replace the one that's here and paste that IP in. Uh, the user is going to be EC2 user. That's the, the default account we created within AWS. And then as I mentioned, you will need to have the PEM file here and I'm gonna call mine my dev key dot pem, which is the name of the file that I created, just to confirm that. So my my dev key dot pem is the name of my pem file, and it lives in the user my name document AWS keys. So I just got to make sure that that is correct, and I have that correct. Uh, so there we go. That looks correct to me. So now that we have that, go ahead and save that. All right, and come down here, go back again. Now this time, select the option again to connect the host. And now we have it configured. So let's go ahead and select, select that option. The first time you do that, it's gonna set up your host and you will then um, be prompted. Uh, sometimes you, you might actually get a prompt to whether or not to continue uh, or not. You may get a second prompt there. I didn't see it this time, but sometimes there's actually a second prompt you will see to continue. Uh, so if you get that, just go ahead and click continue. And once you do that, uh, you should see a prompt here showing the IP address. And this is actually our uh, terminal on our remote server. So at this point, uh, I can run commands on here and print working directory and kind of see where I'm at and see what directory I'm on. So I'm actually wrote it remote it directly into that server and also any of the folders that i see and such will all be will all be visible through here uh, just as a, as though i was uh, connected directly to it uh, so if i do a node dot version you'll see that i have uh, 18.12.1 installed at this time and at this point we now have uh, this set up to correctly uh, remote work, rem do remote development within 
Visual Studio Code uh, using a Linux instance. Hope you found this useful, and please uh, reach out if you have any questions. Be happy to answer any questions.